as a matter of as as a, as a as an introduction to this. Um, uh, essentially, we're going to go through just the operation of the session, the mechanics of it. Um, then John's going to provide a brief overview of, of the book, its, uh, its key themes and topics, and so forth. Um, then the main focus is going to be on polls we're going to run. So we're going to ask a series of questions, which, we, which we've um, organised beforehand. And then as, as the results come through, John's going to provide some commentary, some thoughts on, on those. And that's going to and that's going to take up the bulk of the session. We've got also a couple of questions the authors that people have, have, have asked, and we'll see how we go for time on those. But we can obviously come back to those um, if time allows. Um, we'll have some summary and close at the end. So that's really how we're going to operate over the next uh, ninety minutes or so. Um, so to intend, just to go through the mechanics, as I said, we, we're using um, polls to generate interaction and insights. And some of you have sent us some questions and John's put some questions and we've put some questions together. So that, that's going to be the main way we're going to get some, um, some, some discussion going. Um, the system we're using allows you to make snap comments on particular poll results. Um, and they come up for a few seconds uh, um, uh, before they disappear, not saving. So, so there is an, an ability to have some immediate um, comments, sort of uh, instantaneous, um, if you wish, and you'll and um, you'll see the instructions of that on this on, on the screen. We've also got the Zoom chat facility, which is there. Um, if you put anything you want, and then in terms of comments and thoughts, obviously not questions to be addressed now because we've already got those sorted. And, um, and don't forget to keep yourself on news as well, because obviously with a large number of people, um, we want to keep the feedback um, uh, pretty low. Um, so those of you would have seen the pre-session um, um, messages about using Mentimeter, which is one of these uh, polling vehicles that have emerged in the last few years as we've all started doing this, this sort of stuff. Um, we, we've asked you if you can to integrate it with your Zoom desktop via the app, um, which um, I'm sure some, some of you have done, because said that's for the best user experience. If you can't, uh, no, no problem, you can join in via a web browser or your mobile and we'll be showing um, access codes and websites on all the sites so you can sort of um, use that as a, as a, as a, as a, as a channel to, um, to vote and participate if the, if the app on the desktop um, is not working. <laughs> um, or your phone yeah, as well. Yeah, it's just Okay, um, and of course, we've decided to have a fantastic prize for those people who are uh, participating, and we've got 10 human lean books signed by John Gina ready to give away. Unfortunately, we haven't got Noel's signature on there. He was too expensive. I think we couldn't afford him. Um, actually, it was a bit, I think the logistics of sending them out in the back were a bit too much. Um, if, anyway, if you want a chance to win one of these, simply um, put your name um, and last name and for prize draw, write that in the chat. We'll collect them all afterwards and do a, uh, a draw in the next few, few weeks for those people who, uh, who, who, who won those. Okay, well, let's, um, let, let's move straight on to um, the, the introduction um, of the book by John. Um, John and I, I think we started working back in the late 90s on the, on the MSC and Lean Operations at uh, the Lean Enterprise Research Centre at Cardiff University, which I think was launched in 1998, the world's first um, Lean Masters. And I can see some names from that first group are on the, in, in this session today. So great to see you or to see you still here. Um, we, John and I then, we worked on many short course developments at, at, at Lean Enterprise Research Centre and of course, um, about 10 years of annual Lean conferences, which were great, great events for many of the alumni and, and, our, and our contacts. Of course, the, the John's other key books, um, the Lean Toolbox and the Service System Toolbox have been out for several years, and those are, have been major bestsellers in terms of um, lean literature um, and, and, the, and the whole ethos and, and idea of, of lean that John has portrayed in those books has been has informed certainly the thinking at the Lean Enterprise Research Centre and subsequently for the Lean Competency System as well. So it's great to see uh, that this new book is out. Um, we've got an opportunity here to explore it, um, and um, get some ideas um, of, of its key themes and trends. So I I'll, I'll, I'll should now hand over to John, um, who should be um, um, unmuted and ready to go. John, are you, um, are you ready to go? He says, hopefully. 
Okay, uh, I hope you can all hear me. Is that is that okay? That's great, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, hello everyone, and it's good to see some of the old pals uh, in, in the lineup. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So, what is uh, what is this all about? Well, first of all, I think the uh, yeah, I think as Simon has just uh, said. Um, Many of you will probably know about the, the, the Lean Toolbox, um, but uh, over the years we've had uh, quite a bit of comment on the Lean Toolbox. Of course, the Lean Toolbox is a book on on the um, <clears throat> on, on the, if you like the hards, the hard side of Lean. So you know the old uh, Toyota house with the say uh, just in time and and Judoka as up as the pillars with the people in the middle, or maybe continuous improvement and respect for people another representation. So the Lean Toolbox was very strongly on the tool side or on the hard side, but uh, various people have commented uh, saying that there hasn't been enough on the on the people side. There was one chapter on the, in, on the, on the people side in, uh, in the Lean Toolbox, but a lot to uh, get on with. So uh, that was one of the uh, ideas is that uh, the, the book Human Lean would be a, a companion book to the to the Lean Toolbox. Also, you know, although there's been a, a lot of uh, publications and talk about things like culture, leader, standard work, GEMBA, respect, and so on, uh, actually, uh, there's been an absolute explosion of material uh, in the, on the people side, not necessarily on, on the lean side, but on the, the general ideas of, for example, behavioral economy, uh, economics, psychology, uh, and, you know, just uh, as examples of this, uh, uh, just uh, recently, so uh, there's, there's a book uh, uh, on habits uh, by James Clear, Atomic Habits, which has been on the uh, uh, bestseller list uh, uh, for, I think, the best part of, of, uh, of nine months. And then, of course, there's uh, the uh, just the magisterial work by Daniel Kahneman on thinking fast and slow, which has been a top seller for on the, the, the general uh, <clears throat> list for, uh, uh, well, over a year. And also other topics of bias and uh, you know, things like uh, big stuff on, on the brain and so on. So, uh, and uh, although a lot of this is uh, not uh, is talk spoken about in the lean area. Uh, I think it has got a lot of relevance uh, to the uh, <clears throat> to lean in general. And then, of course, I also wanted to follow up on some of the visits that we've had over the time at Cardiff and at Buckingham. For example, we had uh, well, I'll read out these: uh, David Mayer, Mike Rother, uh, Gwendolyn Galsworth, uh, David Mann, Patrick Graup, Wally Hop. Uh, and uh, also our local uh, people, Frank, uh, Frank Devine, and uh, last but by no means least, uh, and Noel Hennessy, who uh, was once an MSc student and has gone on to do a, a doctorate, and uh, which we're very pleased about. So, uh, but then there was also the idea of, of the pandemic, so which was actually a blessing in disguise because it uh, kind of uh, gave us the opportunity to sit back and try and consolidate some of this uh, material. So um, the idea of, of the lean, of human lean is, is something like the lean toolbox. In other words, it's, uh, it consists of quite concise, I hope, uh, uh, sections uh, uh, on, on a range of these topics, which I hope are, are, are relevant, plus uh, some indications of, uh, of where you can go to uh, for further information if you so wish, if you want to uh, probe uh, more deep, uh, in more detail. So uh, as, the, the, as the subtitle suggests, it's a, it's a source book, if you like. So a source book for uh, uh, a place that you could, uh, to, to start off by uh, finding out on these various topics and then leading on to uh, suggestions for further, <clears throat> further thinking. Okay. By the way, the, the, the title, uh, Head, Heart, Hands, Health, and, and, uh, and Habitat, that, kind of, that comes from an article by uh, also one of our visitors, Wally Hopp, uh, who wrote a really great article in this uh, by trying to put these things together. So um, 
yeah, that's uh, that's what we're trying to do. So yeah, how to use it? It's not uh, idea would be that uh, probably people wouldn't be looking at it from uh, uh, cover to cover, reading it from cover to cover, but rather something that you want to dip into uh, as uh, as subjects uh, might uh, arise. So um, <clears throat> It's, uh, in other words, it's a companion volume to the Lean Toolbox. Um, uh, and uh, I think, well, of course, the, the, the topics covered in this book are just uh, well, uh, are vast, and we couldn't really uh, say a heck of a lot about all, uh, many of them, um, nor could we really cover the whole field. But, uh, but anyway, they are. I hope they're relevant topics, which include also material on, on established lean practices. So uh, uh, I found that uh, uh, in speaking to many managers, um, there's, uh, there's, there's great familiarity with uh, things like uh, the uh, idea of uh, uh, culture, gamba, respect, leader, standard work, and so on, and also the older um, <clears throat> concepts uh, like Maslow's hierarchy and uh, and so on. But uh, uh, probably not so much uh, uh, awareness of, of uh, some of the, the later concepts uh, in, in, with, in some regards. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a bit of introduction. Uh, so maybe I'll hand you back to Simon now to uh, take us further. Okay, thanks, John. Um, okay, so um, we're now going to move on to the main sort of part of the session, which will be our polls, um, which we're going to use for Mentimeter for. So I'm going to stop this presentation and move on to the Mentimeter one now. So um, I, shall, I shall explain what, what, what's happening. So it's essentially we've got, um, hopefully, some of you have got a plug-in. Um, Others, if you haven't, no worries, we, we, we explain how, how that's going to work. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is going to invite you all to um, the, the Mentimeter Human Lean um, pre presentation. Um, so I'm, I'm now clicking that button and you will we get various messages um, on your screens, uh, seeing when you've installed the, um, the uh, plugin for that. Um, I'm now sharing the um, Mentimeter screen, so most of you should be able to see something now. Um, and the first um, slide I've got there is using Mentimeter. Um, now, essentially, what we're going to do, we're going to use this as our as our polling vehicle. Um, the questions will flow. I will I will facilitate it, start them, stop them, um, and uh, invite John to comment as as and when. Um, we've got a time allowance. We notionally just to just to keep it flowing, but we can be flexible with that depending how it goes. And say, John's going to comment on the poll results and uh, that, that will re result in some further uh, discussion by the chat as well. As I said before, you can make an instant comment via um, the, the send a comment feature on, on the screen. Um, and um, you can also vote either via the Zoom app or in a separate web page or a mobile phone. Um, now, the the if you um, if you haven't got a um, the Zoom app, then essentially you go to www.menti.com um, and then once you enter this code seven nine four two zero seven zero four, the questions will come up and you'll be able to vote on on that screen. Alternatively, you can take a picture of this QR code on mobile, and then um, um, uh, you can do the same the same sort of thing. So. There are, there are several ways to do this and, and participate. Um, if you can't do anything, obviously you can just join in and watch, watch the results as they, as they, um, as they come in. Okay, um, so I think we've got, hopefully enough of you have now got sorted to be able to use um, the voting. So we shall go on and start the, um, start the session. I'm gonna start with a bit of an icebreaker, um, which is simply we want you to put a pin on the map um, in terms of where you're located. If anyone's not in Europe, then put it somewhere in the Atlantic so we know we're, we're not here. Um, so go ahead and put a pin in. Um, we, we can see how many people have um, participated in the, um, in the, um, in the voting on it with a 
with, a, with a, the icon in the top right hand corner. So that will give us an idea. So we've got a, a obviously not 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 surprisingly um, a big a big cluster in um, uh, the UK emerging and um, a fair few in, in looks like the, the Netherlands area and then into the, the, the Scandinavia area. So um, good to see that. Um, well, I think that that's proving that most of you have um, been able to um, take um, to to make a vote and use this. Um, this pin on the map type facility. So anyway, so so so, so good to see we've got a broad, a broad spread at least outside the UK as well. So I'm going to um, close the vote in that now because that was more of a test. And now we're going to move on to um, the the first area. We, we've divided the questions up into broad areas. So the first is going to be engagement in human needs. So perhaps John, if you want to just give a few a few words about how engagement is treated in the book. Yeah, okay. So, uh, of course, engagement has been a, a, a big theme over in the last number of years. And in the, in the book, there's uh, various ideas on, in, on engagement. Um, first of all, Noel Hennessy, who uh, the co-author, of course, uh, did his doctorate in this, in this area. And, uh, and Noel has got the idea about engagement being re re really related to trust. Um, and... Uh, uh, emotional connection leading to, if you like, the, the norm of reciprocity. I know Lou, uh, Noel is somewhere out there, so he might like to say something on this. But uh, you know, I think the, the uh, norm of reciprocity is a uh, is a great way of of getting some engagement, and I think it fits in very nicely with uh, one of the other models uh, in in the book, uh, um, which is a, a feedback model. So uh, that's one thing that you could pick up on, on the book. Uh, another one is by Frank Devine, who I think many of you know Frank uh, from various uh, sources. And uh, Frank uh, talks about rapid mass engagement, which in, in, you know, involves all employees uh, developing their own behavioral standards, recognition, coaching, uh, uh, and feedback. And then another one we've uh, spoken about is uh, the Richardson's idea on Toyota engagement, which is about uh, six problem solving steps and what they call ev uh, everybody everyday engagement to do uh, also linked with uh, <clears throat> discipline and accountability. So yeah, those are three of the, uh, the, the models that are spoken about in the, in the book. Uh, I, I don't know if, if uh, Neil, uh, if Noel would like to comment. Uh, uh, Noel, if you're out there. Uh, thanks very much, John. Yeah, uh, again, uh, just to reiterate everything you're saying, you know, and certainly in my experience, you can have the best, the best lean tools and systems in the world are are of no value if people decide not to engage with them, you know? So engage in, in play engagement to me is a prerequisite for lean and that. And certainly in my own study, I looked at the idea of using lean as a catalyst for employee engagement. And within that doctoral study, it, it indicated there was four, there, there was four neighbors, like the, the role of the leader uh, was an obvious one. The second one was the, the opportunity to empower people and to, to, to leave them actively change and improve their own working environment recognition and I think the fourth one I think is really important as well and it kind of highlighted the point that to work today is very standardized you know the last thing we want to do is, particularly if it's a job on the factory floor is for an operator or an associate to deviate from 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 the standard and and that's necessary however it also means that you could have somebody there doing this this job day in day out, and they could have all the ambition in the world and all the potential in the world. But if they don't get the opportunity, they can never realise it, you know. And I think involving people in continuous improvement presents them in that, with that opportunity, you know. So again, the engagement it's 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 a it's a it's a big chapter, and the team across the John is is really it's about getting the best out of people rather than getting the most out of them. I'll hand it back to you. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, let's well, let's move okay, on then. Right. Um, so, so we've got our first poll question. 
Um, and this is how does your organization go about engagement? Um, you've got options there, top down, bottom up, input memorably, focus on leaders, HR function driven, no formal program or even other. And on this one, you can select um, all the ones that are appropriate for you. So um, off, off you go. Mm -hmm. Bottom up, HR function driven. Oh. You can see as people add their responses, the, 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 the graph dynamically adjusts those. Mm. Okay. Getting patrol. Oh, okay. Okay. A few more people coming through. Let's uh, give it a couple more seconds. Okay, um, let's, um, let's, let's, let's get some comment on that, John. This is, I think we, we met a few people coming through, but um, top down is still, still predominating. Yeah, okay. Also, uh, yeah, Noel, you might also like to say a few words on this one. So uh, quite, quite interesting that, that uh, such a, uh, the high proportion of, of top down, because uh, these days there's plenty of attention to, to uh, sort of bottom up engagement, like uh, rapid ra rapid mass engagement which involves uh, everyone and uh, also the uh, uh, ideas from from Noel on that so getting input from everyone uh, is an important uh, sort of more current theme also focus on team leaders I think that's that's also appropriate uh, HR function is kind of uh, interesting so uh, actually um, this is uh, um, one comment uh, that we had uh, in from early days of the book was saying that oh this is a book that's for the HR and actually of course the, the <clears throat> uh, human lean is not about HR really it's uh, uh, I think HR is a sort of facilitating uh, uh, department but uh, in fact uh, these days uh, to get human lean going uh, is something for for managers, middle managers, team leaders to, to focus on rather than, than, than HR. So, okay. Um, Noel, did you want to say something on this one? Okay. We'll, we'll take that as a no. Okay, great. Well, 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 well thanks all for that one. Let's, let's move on to the next one in, in the engagement one. Um, and this is a ranking question. So you've got to rank the key challenges in getting staff engaged in continuous improvement activities. Um, so up to, up to if you start going, um, we should be able to see how we had to do this, but it's about a first to sixth ranking or getting CID part of the job or finding the right incentives or getting middle management to support, getting the budget, having the right role to drive it through and senior management support. Okay. Mm. Getting the budget, key challenge. Let me see them. Getting the right role to run. Yeah, okay. Well, okay, John. Do you want to make some comments on that, John? There's still we will still allow the um, the results to come through, but um, yeah. well, <laughs> yes. So I've just had uh, one of the. One of the uh, I'm getting a feedback. Yeah, keep, if 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 you're not talking, can you keep yourself on mute, on, on, on mute everyone? Okay, because there's a bit of feedback coming through. 
uh, yeah, I just had one of the comments from the, uh, from someone. I uh, was that uh, uh, <clears throat> saying that uh, a bit of a sad reflection on on the, the status of lean. So uh, that, that was uh, from our our friend Owen Barkley Hill. But so in saying that. Uh, uh, too much maybe attention on uh, to on top management but uh, clearly this is a still an issue so getting senior management to support continuous improvement uh, quite interesting that it uh, i think uh, clearly senior management uh, support is absolutely necessary but uh, i think a lot of these other things are uh, getting middle management to support continuous improvement is, a, is i think is a crucial one having the right role um I don't know whether that would be sort of reflect on the HR sort of function. I'm not sure about that one. Perhaps, perhaps you'd like to comment on this one. Uh, and of course, well, the budget, of, uh, of course. So uh, let's, let's see what it says here. I select a top down because uh, no option for catch ball. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, that's the interesting comment about. Uh, that may be relating to Hoshin and so on as a, a part of the engagement uh, possibility. Um, yep. So that's uh, okay. Comment. I think that I think that's that's fine, John. In terms of that comment, um, I mean, yeah. The, the the I think the the senior management aspect comes through in all parts of the research that's been done. Really, whether that's in uh, getting the right vision or supporting it, and it's it's clearly still part of the main um, equation to get people that want to get engaged in this. So I think some, 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 um, some that reinforces the, the previous research, I think. Okay, let's, let's move on to the next, next question, um, which is focused a bit on what's happened in the last couple of years, and it's has your work changed significantly as a result of remote hybrid work in the last two years? So, um, it's yes in response to COVID. Yes, it was an existing trend. Yes, an existing trend, but accelerated by COVID or no, just continued as, as before. Hmm. Well, yeah. COVID, yes. Yeah. Okay, we, we, any any thoughts on the, on on that response, John? We've just about got um, all all the responses we're going to get. Well, the, the the two big ones that have been selected there are absolutely uh, to be expected. I think so. Uh, uh, ideas of, of, of you know, like working from home, uh, remote working, but also uh, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> you know I think it's uh, COVID has brought a, a huge amount of change and acceleration, but also of course. Uh, uh, in parallel, so so many of these other uh, things that have been happening, like like for example, the, the rise in in, in automation, and uh, which is kind of uh, what we're doing now, having a sort of webinar, and this the, the enabling us to do this is just uh, a huge change for 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 many of us. So, uh, and I think it's going to be permanent. Actually, a lot of this is uh, you know, just. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the people that I know of us are beginning to uh, trickle back to work now, but not on a uh, five days uh, back to work. At least this is for people who work in the sort of uh, office environment, software in environment. Of course, factory work uh, would be uh, maybe <clears throat> not the same. So let's see what uh, what people say about the chats there. Yeah. Indication. Okay. Well, let's move on to the the next um, the next. Engagement question again. This is what from um, similar sort of um, um, theme around the pandemic. Has the pandemic loosened a bit of heart in organisations? Um, I think we can already interpret what heart means. Um, so let's have a look at this one. Yeah, to see. Yes. Uh, <laughs> 
Yes, I agree with this. Sir. Yes, pretty much. Need to see. Yeah. Hmm. Need to see. Hmm. Okay. Okay, John, any, any thought on that? Obviously, well, yet, uh, yet to see seems uh, to be, we're not quite sure yet. A bit of a surprise for me to see uh, uh, so many people uh, plumping for yet to see. So, uh, uh, so uh, that, that's a surprise for me. But uh, so I thought uh, about uh, yes, temporarily, or uh, in, in particular, yes, permanently would uh, would figure more, more prominently. But uh, wow. Well, uh, Interesting. Uh, okay, good. Um, let's let's move on to the to the to the next question. So this is another one of these pie chart. Respect and humility, both are going trends. Respect, yes. Humility, no. Respect, no. Humility, yes. Both are growing trends, yeah. Respect. Yeah. I'm change on both. Uh, both are growing trends. Respect, no. Oh, okay, interesting. Respect, yes. Humility, no. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. So thoughts on that, John? Well, <clears throat> yeah. Also interesting. I so, that, but uh, I think probably to be expected. Both both are growing trends. Actually, when we wrote the book, there's a sub, sub, substantial section on uh, uh, on 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 both respect and humility, and looking at all the various dimensions of this is, uh, I must say that it really su surprised me of how, how all the, the various dimensions that uh, people uh, come up with in the area of, of respect and humility. So, uh, and of course, this is also tied in with the idea of, uh, of people's autonomy and uh, or the demand for autonomy that's uh, become so prominent. Uh, also, the request for for, for participation and uh, and what we've just been speaking about earlier, the ideas of, of engagement. So uh, I, I certainly think the, the growing trends would be the would be the way to go. But uh, also interestingly, re respect yes, humility no. Maybe that's kind of a bit of a reflection on, on management. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Okay, let's um, move on to the next set of questions, uh, and that's around the broad topic of learning. Do you want to just outline the role of learning in, in the book, John? Well, uh, okay. Well, of course, uh, learning has been long associated with with lean, and there's a substantial section in, uh, in the book on on on, uh, on, on learning. So, uh, you know, a couple of quotes. Uh, uh, from Heathcote and Powell, lean is about learning, and uh, from from uh, George Davidson, creating thinking people. This is all about learning, really. And also another one: mistakes are opportunities to learn. So, uh, but also all the uh, uh, different uh, sort of dimensions here about that are necessary: humility and uh, uh, listening and awareness of of, of bias as 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 prerequisites and uh, from so-called push learning to, uh, to pull learning. So uh, I think uh, well, I think a lot of us have been involved with uh, sort of push type learning, but we're seeing more prominent uh, ideas of uh, pull type learning. And in particular, we also uh, said quite a bit on so-called action learning, which is uh, uh, seems to be a very uh, strong and growing uh, area, action learning. Uh, which is, uh, I think, uh, that fitted in quite nicely with the the MSc program. So, if you like learning by doing, so uh, action learning. 
And uh, also another interesting idea, the idea of uh, that the sort of Toyota idea by Shuhari, so the, the, which is uh, about the, uh, which actually fits in very uh, nicely with uh, the TWI uh, sort of uh, uh, thinking. So the Shu is about uh, learning from a master and then uh, uh, and then the ha is about keeping tabs and then re is about then uh, becoming a, a, a teacher yourself, so the shu ha re as a, as a, as a set. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, there, there's many uh, kind of learning frameworks that I uh, probably won't speak about now, but I think the, the, the number of learning frameworks that uh, uh, not, not necessarily in the lean area, uh, but uh, Although Mike Rother has spoken uh, quite a lot about some of the, 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 the learning framework. So uh, anyway, okay, a few words. That's okay, thanks, Donesh. Okay, we have, a, we have a few questions on learning. Um, so learning is crucial for lean progress, as John just said. What methods do you use, select all that you use? So you can, you can click whichever ones that you're gonna use there. Offsite training, on-site courses, external visits, benchmarking, Carter, A3 mentoring, PDCA, action learning, after action reviews, or any others. So feel free to click away. Oh, oh wow. John, any 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 thoughts on that, sir? Yes, well, uh, very interesting, uh, uh, the, seeing uh, uh, quite a substantial uh, number talking about action learning. I think that's, uh, uh, that's probably a, a surprise to, to me to see how, how strong that is, but uh, really great to see that. Um, probably not so much of a surprise to see about uh, um, A3 uh, as, a, as a powerful way of, of, of learning, so uh, learning through problem solving and, and mentoring and so on. I think for me, a bit of a surprise is the, how low Carta is, because uh, I mean, I think Carta is a, very strongly related to, 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 to learning. Uh, on a on an ongoing experimental basis, so uh, maybe that's something to pick up on. Also, uh, surprising to for me to see that uh, after action reviews is twice as um, twice as many respondents for uh, AARs uh, as opposed to Carter, because of course after action reviews. Uh, 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 originated in the military, so they are what they say. They, you, after every little action, you 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 have an immediate uh, follow up. Of course, there's quite a lot of uh, uh, cautionary tales about how you do after action reviews. Um, but anyway, great to see that it's, uh, it's picking up so strongly. Um, on site courses, well, um, I, I think well probably not. Uh, surprising to see the, the large percentage there, but what we're thinking about is that uh, making those sort of pull type courses rather than push type courses, but uh, okay. So uh, a very interesting set of responses there, I think. Okay, thanks for that, John. Um, okay, next question in this series. So this is a allocation of 100 points, a slightly different format for the question. Essentially, you've got 100 points, so you've got um, five areas to apportion them, more online. So this is, you've got 100 points, how would you um, apportion them to enhance training effectiveness? So it's more online, digital, more facilitators, more support, more time allocation for staff to undertake CI, and more preventative based training. So these, this is your 100 point allocation. So um, please start allocating now. This will take a bit of time, obviously, a bit more um, involved, but let's get the results in. Go 
course, this is a trade-off question. You're having to trade off one against the others. Okay, a few more still coming in, but John, what, what are your thoughts on that one? Well, just uh, uh, perhaps before we go, go on, just uh, looking at some of the, the chats here saying that uh, there's Linda Spink saying time allocation is senior management. Well, that fits in very well what we're just talking about, but we've created our own on site internal tra uh, training program. Part of that, we coach A3 mentoring. Okay, that's uh, uh, very appropriate. And Tammy talking about uh, communities of practice. So, uh, uh, yes. Uh, that is something that we, we, we mentioned, and uh, I think that's a really good one, Tammy. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Now, here we say, uh, here, this is interesting, saying that more time allocation for staff to undertake continuous improvement. So, you know, I think that if you're in a, uh, uh, <clears throat> an unstable environment, uh, it makes Kaizen activities, continuous improvement activities, very difficult. So if you're if you're running around like the sort of proverbial blue eyes fly, uh, you just can't don't don't have time to do a lot of continuous improvement. So uh, I don't know whether that reflects uh, uh, that sort of situation about uh, pe people being pressed because they're uh, in an unstable environment. Now it might not be that uh, instability could be there could be all sorts of reasons for instability, but uh, uh, so. Maybe that would uh, suggest we should get after uh, some of the in, uh, underlying causes of instability uh, to free up time for continuous improvement. I'm, I'm not sure if that's that right. And more, uh, and the old senior management story, of course, is uh, probably absolutely uh, <coughs> predictable. More face-to-face -face training. Yes, that that uh, would fit in uh, with the uh, the uh, sort of mentoring activities that you. Uh, under, undertake in a, with, uh, with A3. Uh, <clears throat> ah, okay, shortage of trainers, okay. Um, you know, a shortage of trainers uh, that uh, I think uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a very important one. So we've got this idea about the, the idea that it's not just uh, uh, sort of PDCA and, uh, uh, but it's, uh, it, it's, it, it, it's not just practice, it's deliberate practice. So it's practice with, with informed feedback. So uh, that would be a comment that you uh, uh, fit in with A3 as well. So uh, it, it, uh, a lot of skill is required on that. So it's not just more facilitators, it's uh, more, more skilled facilitators, I think. Yeah, more digital training, hmm, interesting. So uh, perhaps I'll have a look at that. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks, John. I think the what's interesting we've had two years of a massive growth of online and digital training as people have had to move pretty quickly from face to face. So it's probably not surprising, and that was at the bottom because we've yeah. probably had our fill of that for the time being in terms of um, maybe we've reached a point where we need yeah. something else to make training effective. Yeah. So I'm just picking up on some of the comments. Yeah. Yeah. I see one from Mark Schaefer. Hello, Mark. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. So, do people need more time to? Uh, or do they need to prioritize continuous improvement? Yes, absolutely. So uh, uh, I think that's, uh, that also reflects on, uh, on uh, instability. And then Tammy again, shouldn't CI be part of the, the, the day job? Yes, uh, yeah, if possible. Uh, uh, you know, if it can be, uh, <clears throat> if you've got a, a situation of stability, yes, absolutely. And, and, and also Owen again, or, or Owen can always be relied to say on a few comments, so uh, a bit suspicious about full-time trainers. It, it takes responsibility away from management to get involved in coaching. Yes, good comment there, Owen. I think, uh, good one. Okay, great. Um, let's move on. Um, okay, we're gonna have a question on leadership. Do you wanna talk about leadership, John, in the human leadership? 
Well, yeah, so leadership is just, uh, well, I think everybody would know this is that uh, just a huge area, so uh, difficult to really uh, settle on, on what to speak about it, uh, in the book here, but uh, I think an ongoing theme uh, throughout here is the idea of servant leadership, so uh, that, 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 okay, but also some of the big kind of themes, uh, the, the, the different uh, approaches is uh, sort of, is transformational leadership, um, uh, where you're relying on influence, uh, in, um, inspiration, individualized, uh, uh, as opposed to transactional, which is about uh, focusing on the transaction, uh, uh, the leadership transaction. And then the other, uh, the, uh, the other big one in the leadership theory and so on is this idea of situational leadership, which is, uh, uh, probably most well known by Hershey and Blanchard, which is used by Toyota and so on, of course, uh, situational you know, leadership, but also all sorts of other things of uh, uh, raising their possibilities. So, uh, you know, em emotional intelligence as, a, as, a, as an idea of, on, on leadership. And then the idea of the international dimension, or are there different dimensions? And here we found it, of course, quite interesting to pick up on the, the so-called globe studies, where uh, what was found in the globe studies were the, uh, the, the, the differences of, on effectiveness between uh, different nations. So uh, what is effective in, in leadership, for example, in India might not be the same as you find in Germany as, a, as opposed to what you find in France, Britain, and so on. So uh, I thought those were, uh, that was interesting to pick up on, on that thing. But also uh, the, I think uh, what has been, uh, pretty well discounted uh, these are uh, oh, oh, partly discounted the idea of, of trait based leadership so which was a big theme some years ago but now i think uh, trait based leadership seems to be going out the window a little bit although the, if you like the ocean uh, characteristics the the uh, the, uh, the psych, uh, psychology related uh, uh, dimensions, uh, ocean, openness, uh, conscientiousness, uh, extroversion, agreeableness, and uh, neuro, 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 neuroticism, if you like, how those uh, sort of uh, characteristics relate to, uh, uh, to leadership. And then uh, yet another idea is uh, also re related to leadership is the, uh, the huge work that has been done by uh, Caldini on, on, on influence. So uh, what is a, our effective uh, uh, ways of influencing people? And of course, this is, uh, Caldini was a guy that uh, did lots of work in the idea of, in the field of marketing, but, uh, well, but also uh, now in the, in the field of, of overlapping into the field of leadership. So a gigantic topic really. So, uh, uh, and something that, uh, well, we're, we're learning more and about, more and more about it all the time. Okay, um, right, let's have a look. We, I think we've got one question on leadership, um, which is another ranking one. So you're going to rank the following attributes of an effective lead leader. So you've got quite a few there to do with coach, empathy, finisher, growth mindset, impatient influencer, knowledge of tools, optimism, visionary. So we'll allow a bit of time for this because you have to think which, which, which you're going to rank in order there. So a lot of trade-offs. So please... Um, Rank away. Hmm, a lot of place changing here. Yeah. I think we should have one of those like horse horse race commentators saying visionary coming up the blind side or something like that. But,
Okay, John, what, we've just covered a few, few more to go, but uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, on, on that? Well, I'm just uh, picking up on some of the comments here. Yes, hello, George. Uh, good, uh, good to see you taking part. So he's saying that uh, uh, George Donaldson says, uh, I think that humility should be the number one, but but it isn't on the list yet. So these are, of course, all these traits. So well, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's a very uh, excellent point that you're making there, George, um, <clears throat> about humility and uh, but uh, but also you know uh, we as we said earlier the ideas of these uh, traits is there's uh, 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 a bit of reflection going on on, on this trait based leadership you know uh, the, the the thing about uh, uh, and being replaced by uh, situational leadership like for example you know the idea of say Winston Churchill being a, a great leader during the second world war but uh, not so great really uh, away from that situation so uh, the idea of uh, uh, of situational leadership uh, yeah, I think is uh, an important idea but what we've got now is that so fitting in a, I think coaching probably does uh, link in with uh, your idea of, of uh, humility, George. I think that's uh, uh, effective leader, uh, visionary. I think that's also a very uh, situational thing uh, that, uh, yeah. Gr uh, now, uh, this is a, the third one is a very interesting one. So growth mindset. So this is the idea from Carol Dweck, uh, who uh, talks about the, uh, and once again, back to George, uh, about humility. So. Uh, uh, this um, <coughs> Carol Dweck's uh, ideas on on the on the growth mindset, saying that you know, are you do you uh, it's, uh, do you believe that uh, uh, you're born with particular traits and uh, there's nothing you can do about it, or are you a person who's who believes that your your mindset can be can be grown and improved? And uh, I think uh, Carol Dweck's uh, researchers have shown uh, quite conclusively that a growth mindset is, is certainly possible. You can change people's outlook. Uh, 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 <clears throat> so that's good to see that uh, so high up on the list. Yeah, optimism. Yeah, well, okay, that would, uh, that would fit in with the, the ocean characteristics. Finisher, yeah, that's... <laughs> Yeah, so I think some great set of comments there, I think. Lean leader is an enabler to co coaching and so empowering are the most important things for me. Yeah, well, and uh, yes, and a uh, comment from Graham. Hello, Graham. Okay, good to see you. So uh, really interesting to see that coach scores highest as a lean leader, but Carter was scored so lowly as a learning approach. Yes, good, good point. How do people train leaders as effective coaches? Yeah. <clears throat> well, by a, uh, it's a long process. It's risky to just throw leaders into coaching without a structure. Yes. So uh, again, uh, there's quite a lot of material in the book on, on coaching and uh, coaching is definitely a skill that uh, needs a lot of development and uh, can't be assumed just uh, sort of straight off. So yeah, great point that Graham is making there. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Um, interesting responses on that, on the lead leadership uh, question. Okay, we're going to look at um, the general area of organization now. Uh, John, do you want to talk about organization in, uh, in human? Well, you know, I think this relates to an earlier point about uh, the, the pandemic and so on, but uh, there's been, uh, the pandemic has certainly shifted people's ideas about the, the organization very strongly to the idea about uh, shift to uh, uh, more work-life balance, and uh, but this was an on, this was a, a a theme that was developing very strongly anyway, and, and uh, being being that people are uh, uh, more concerned with uh, um, autonomy and uh, <clears throat> uh, and of course also linked to the the uh, growing uh, educational carry. Uh, uh, 
skills of people. So, so there, you know, there's been this uh, big trend towards participative and, and flexible and uh, flexible flexibility and, and autonomy. So uh, organizations are, 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 are definitely having to adapt to this. Um, and uh, as you say, brought on uh, strongly by the by the pandemic. So, uh, um, <clears throat> so um, you know. Also, I think uh, I do think that uh, there's going to be a big change in uh, in the the, uh, the future uh, lean organization, which will bring a, which will bring many of these ideas to the fore. And you know, we've we've we're seeing some very interesting examples of this, like. Uh, 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 organizations like Birdsog and, and Simco and and uh, and Haya and uh, uh, so uh, there are <clears throat> so moving away you know Toyota is a, a fine organ organization but, but it's really a sort of a top-down sort of uh, place with repetitive work which doesn't really fit in with uh, with uh, many kinds of, of work settings so whereas uh, these new forms of organization, new forms uh, uh, like Bursog, which has got uh, uh, literally thousands of, of nurses working out there with a minimal head office of only a, two, of a, of a very, very small number. And then uh, also um, fitting in uh, with the ideas of, of <laughs> more amusingly, like uh, Parkinson's law, which has been around for a long time. You know, work expands until the time available, and uh, how do you how do you cope with that? And and then the old Yerkes Dodson, which has also been an idea that's been around for a long time, so that there's an optimal balance between the uh, amount of work that you can uh, uh, expect people to do. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, even more, a little bit controversially, has been this uh, stuff by uh, uh, <coughs> by Graeber, uh, the, the late uh, Graeber, but a uh, uh, bit of a socialist uh, sort of uh, uh, viewpoint, saying that uh, about the criticism, what he calls bullshit jobs, you know, so and how many jobs are what he calls bullshit jobs, and we should really think about. Uh, uh, different forms of organization to, to, to reduce this. So uh, a huge amount of stuff going on. And uh, as I say, I'm, I'm quite excited about the, the, the forms of, of a future lean organization, which was going to, I think, inevitably lead to greater participation, greater flexibility, greater autonomy. I think this is absolutely the way it'll, it, it, it's moving already. Okay. okay, thanks, John. Let's uh, let's see what we've got for the questions on organisation. So, so this is a um, another distributed hundred points. So, weight these four stakeholders on should be parties. So, this is the sort of ideal stating that like you've got a hundred points to to distribute amongst customers, managers, staff, and shareholders. So, um, this is a say. This is how we should be organised, uh, or how the state should should be in an, in a more in an ideal world. So, go ahead and. Um, Okay, um, just about to come and see what to go on this. Any initial thoughts on that, John? Well, probably, uh, probably not uh, surprising that uh, customers uh, uh, get the highest one because that fits in with uh, the first lean principle, you know, value and about the idea about uh, uh, about how customers value the the, uh, the service and the, and the product. But interestingly enough, uh, there's uh, the, the 
the second one, uh, staff, not so much behind customers, 43% uh, as against. Uh, this is also a, a big trend in, in many, uh, uh, many discussions, really saying that, you know, um, <clears throat> There's various, so for example, these Indian organizations that think that uh, you should uh, focus uh, on the first uh, first instance in your staff, because if you get your staff uh, right, then uh, the customers will follow, if you like. And uh, so uh, there, there's quite a trend uh, to, uh, towards uh, putting staff higher on the list. And that's nice to see that that's, uh, that, that's being followed in this. Uh, and then also um, the shareholders, uh, uh, falling away so this is uh, uh, also uh, been uh, lots of discussion about this about uh, this movement about uh, away from shareholders being number one uh, so uh, in america there's been all these, these chief executives uh, sort of manifesto that's come out on this one uh, so uh yeah okay so, well, what we'll do with the, the, the next question links back this, so we'll probably come back to these results because what the next question asks is the same question, but this is what actually we think happens at the moment. The first one was the ideal how it should be. This is actually what happens now. So answer the same question, but but where you think the the, the focus is on now with your hundred points. So and then you can compare the two. <laughs> yeah, so just had a Just a few more to come in there, John, but I think you can see the trend. Well, a, a, a very interesting contrast between the between the last one and this one here. So just, uh, but let me just uh, uh, <clears throat> comment on here. So uh, uh, Owen Barclay Hill again saying about. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Milton Friedman's edict about uh, shareholder value. So uh, how how powerful that has been. So uh, interesting that it's uh, that it was quite low on the, on the first one, but is significantly higher. So maybe uh, some organisations, what you pick up on this, some organi many organisations, probably a little bit behind the times on on on, on this one. Um, and uh, of course, managers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was an interesting idea that uh, well uh, managers as employ as opposed to employees. So uh, this is of course uh, been lots of discussion on on the, on the idea of um, the the rewards uh, of managers and and uh, ch chief executives and the, the ratio of the average uh, earning power of of top CEO as opposed to uh, the. Uh, frontline staff and how that has grown significantly over the last uh, number of years so uh, i would hope there's a bit of reaction against that and uh, so maybe that the these um <coughs> graphs would, would uh, re uh, reflect this so uh, uh, just a, a, a an earlier question on the um, in the chat show if, uh, the company I mentioned is is Bursog. That's B U U R T Z O R G. Uh, Bursog. That's a, a that's a a, a Dutch uh, nursing organisation. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, just got, I'll go back and forth. So that's on our first one: customers, staff, managers, shareholders, managers, customers, shareholders, staff. So, quite a bit of... uh, so Paul, uh, Paul, Paul Duffy, uh, so hello Paul, yeah, good to see you again. So uh, middle managers are often powerfully resistant to change as they often le uh, left out of engagement until the change is being made, yeah. Can be a bit of a trap for change agents, yes, I think that's, uh, that's a very good comment, yeah. Uh, 
so yeah the you know i, I think the the role of middle managers has been and um, downplayed a lot because uh you know there's uh, hear a lot about uh, top management leadership and the role of frontline but uh, the, i think this is a point that noel has made several points uh, several uh, parts in the book is that how crucial middle managers are so it's a good point to pick up on there paul yeah okay great let's move over on to the next next question um so this is a multi-choice you can select all of them. By which of these is your organization considering to change its structure and or ways of working? You've got towards more home-based working, flattening hierarchy, greater use of automation, more AI outsourcing, onshoring, greater use of temp. So um, select all those that you think apply. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Th thoughts on those results, John? Well, again, I think uh, quite predictable as a result of the pandemic and uh, use of Zoom and so on towards home-based working. Uh, I think that's, as we said earlier, I think that's uh, a trend that's uh, here to stay. So uh, uh, I'm sure that this is uh, correct. Uh, and also, I think probably not uh, uh, surprisingly, the greater use of, of automation and more, more artificial intelligence. I would have thought that uh, AI would have been higher, but uh, uh, perhaps that reflects uh, the uh, kind of sector you're in, because uh, maybe in the service sector, or uh, uh, AI is, is much more prominent, but, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's definitely growing in, in manufacturing in my opinion, but uh, also a bit disappointing to see a greater use of, of, of temps uh, even appearing. It's <laughs> nice to see that it's uh, it's so low, but I would have liked to have seen it even more low because I, I think, uh, okay, anyway, that's a personal opinion, I guess. So flattening the hierarchy, I think it's also a bit disappointing that that is only uh, uh, so 8% because as we, we just talked about some of these organizations like uh, Wordsog and Semco and Haya and, and so on, that uh, where the, the hierarchy is just being incredibly flattened. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. I think um, let's move on to the next question. Um, so this is a specific one on site ecological safety, much attention in recent years on it. How much attention have we given this? Do you want to give a brief um, overview of psych psychological safety before we um, um, answer this one, John? Yeah, well, okay. Well, psychological safety, of course. So, uh, you know, uh, our friend uh, W. Edwards Deming was, has been, was talking about this uh, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, talking about drive out fear. So, uh, easier said than done. But, uh, but more recently, this has become really a, a kind of a big theme. And uh, uh, in particular, <clears throat> so, uh, work by uh, Amy Edmondson of Harvard Business School uh, to, uh, with her wonderful books, The Fearless Organization, and, and the ideas of, uh, of teaming, as uh, Amy Edmondson talks about. So the idea of psychological safety is the uh, ability uh, of people to express their ideas uh, and to not be fearful of if you... Uh, you know, of getting fired if you bring up ideas that maybe the boss doesn't like. And actually, this is so Amy Edmondson's idea is that that without psych, uh, psychological safety is, is absolutely the key to, to continuous improvement and to uh, uh, <clears throat> and to the, 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 the future organization. So, uh, so uh, 
you know, we've also had the idea of, of PDCA and, uh, well, we're talking about PDCA and, but, uh, that, uh, and Socratic method and so on. But, uh, uh, of course, Socrates was a guy that actually uh, talked about uh, psychology, uh, <laughs> criticized uh, senior management and uh, ended up being executed uh, for his, uh, his opinions on this one. But, uh, but anyway, um, <clears throat> So, uh, psychological safety, the idea that uh, ideas must be brought to the fore and everybody, not only the managers and the, the CEO that has got all the, the, the good ideas, in fact, many, many, uh, most of the good ideas are, are from lower down in the organization. And it's crucial uh, to be able to bring those fearlessly uh, forward for, for the organization, for innovation, for teams, continuous improvement, on and on. Okay. Uh, thoughts on those those results? Obviously, some bigger, some attention, no action. So, um... <clears throat> some attention, no action. Yeah. So, quite a nice balance between considerable uh, attention and action. Uh, well, <laughs> nice, nice balance between, I'm glad to see considerable action is, uh, but, uh, Bit more prominent there, so uh, so no, it's not relevant. Well, well, it's not relevant. That's interesting. It, it, somebody would think that, uh, and not aware. Of, uh, well, if you're not aware of it, I think this is just. Well, pick up on Amy Edmondson's uh, uh, stunning stuff on on this uh, on psychological safety. Yeah. So anyway, I'm glad to see that uh, there's uh, considerable attention because, as we said, I think it's a. Uh, it's, it's the way of the future. It has to be. Okay, good. Let's um, let's move on. Um, another ranking one. Ranking order. What you consider to be, to be the most significant recent developments in human being. Um, John, you, we've got the brain down there. Do you want to perhaps just explain what we mean by the brain? Well, yeah, okay. You know, uh, of course, there's been just a gigantic. Uh, uh, a lot of publications and story about the, the importance of the brain. A lot of this uh, sort of stems from, uh, or at least a, a good deal of it stems from the, the work of, uh, of Daniel Kahneman on his, uh, uh, just his magisterial book, Thinking Fast and Slow. So he talks about system one and system two, uh, 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 the, the idea of the brain working in, in, in sort of two, two kinds of systems. and. Um, but also uh, the, uh, the um, many uh, ideas about uh, uh, on, on re really relating to decision making and so on uh, by uh, uh, by Dave Snowden on talking about the uh, and his uh, uh, Kinefin uh, uh, framework. But uh, but I you know I think that this uh, the the we're only beginning to appreciate uh, the, about some of the the complexities and the and, uh, the uh, potential of, of of thinking differently and and how uh, how important this the, this all is you know brought brought to the fore by behavioral economics which has uh, been uh, hugely influential on um, moving away from what economists thought for a long time about the, the rational, about managers and people being rational and uh, Kahneman and, and Tversky showing that, uh, well, in many times, people aren't rational. They're uh, uh, not, at least not as rational as we thought they might be. Okay. Uh, so what do we say here? Engagement, well, top of the list, <laughs> leadership. Uh, that'll engagement that'll make you happy, uh, uh, Noel. So I see engagement in top of the list. Learning psychology, motivation. Yeah. Okay. So uh, motivation. Um, yeah, I, I think we, the motivation has has has, has decreased uh, in. Uh, it was a it was a top factor some some years ago. So I think this is. Uh, uh, appropriate reflection that uh, yeah motivation because motivation brought brought about by uh, these uh, these earlier things engagement leadership learning and so on so uh, yeah 
and then I'll just pick up some other comments. Uh, okay. Um, I have to change jobs and when I am in the background. It's quite outdated. Uh, yeah. Yep. Richard, okay, Paul. Okay, Paul Duffy talking about uh, COVID has caused a somewhat more command and control approach to key decisions from Sealy. Uh, I think uh, it caused a somewhat more command and control approach. Uh, I, th I think that's situationally uh, dependent, Paul. I think uh, in some uh, organizations that's true, but uh, uh, not all. The parent child relationship with new leaders, which is now proving harder to break. Yes, probably. True. So, anyway, I think this is this is uh, this uh, these uh, six uh, oh, ranked orders. I think are, are a good reflection on uh, <coughs> on current practice. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Um, right. Um, we're coming to the last question now, which is. Um, we want you to write three words that typify what lean and people is all about. And this is going to create one of these word clouds that we want to be our sort of summary take out there. So have a think about this and you've got an option. You write three words that really typify what the focus of the example, what, what lean and people is all about. So off you go. So obviously the larger the word, the more times it's been mentioned, mm -hmm. these sort of things. Thoughts for thoughts, John, as we come up, there's a few more coming in. Yeah, well, value. Uh, so first lean principle is still right up there. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, very appropriate. So uh, <clears throat> actually what we're getting here is a, uh, you'll know that there's a, uh, a word picture in the front of uh, human leans, but I think what we've got here is a better version. So uh, <laughs> should actually steal this one, I think. Uh, uh, simplifying, yeah. Scientific thinking, that's some, not something we spoke much about, but uh, I think uh, scientific thinking is, is really a big deal now, uh, I think, in, uh, in a lot of uh, people, people-oriented stuff. So the, the you know, <clears throat> Uh, velocity, yeah. encouraging empathy, yeah, empathy being uh, one of the uh, ocean characteristics, flow, fun, it's huh. a nice one, fun, just a small one there, relevance, mm -hmm. customer respect, so uh, yeah, so Value, custom, and respect. So uh, uh, those sort of like those are probably traditional lean things that we're speaking about. So, but uh, fine, empowerment success, um, engagement, and empowerment. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, yeah, it looks like we've got engagement, learning, value, customer, respect. The sort of top five there with. Empathy, yeah. development, empowerment coming up behind. Yeah, probably uh, um, involvement, uh, 
<clears throat> connecting coaching. Uh, probably uh, alignment. I, I don't think there's great. The, I think this is a, really to be expected. I think this is a, no great surprises on what we're seeing here. I'm not sure if this is right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I think that's 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 great, and hopefully, um, we'll be able to use this little this word cloud again. I think it's a useful summary. Um, okay. Well, that's that was all the pre-prepared questions that we've uh, put down for now. I think the time has just been about right. Um, so um, we'll 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 stop the um, Mintimia presentation. Um, and thank you all for um, sort of engaging in that. It's the first time we've tried on this scale. I think it's a, it's a very useful tool, actually. I think we could use, use, use this again. Um, we've, we've got um, a, a couple of minutes. Um, I, I'm not, I don't suggest we, we, we go beyond our, our 90. Um, I perhaps ask John or Noel if any further thoughts on, on, on human lean that um, you want to make that we haven't uh, all already covered. Any yeah, thoughts well, from? Uh, not just uh, but rather than comment uh, initially uh, we've uh, there's it's great to see that uh, all the comments that are coming up here so uh, I mean so uh, there's some suggestions about further uh, uh, articles by uh, Tammy and uh, uh, by Paul Duffy so this is this is good and uh, so these are some excellent comments to pick up on here so yeah I've enjoyed them so thank you for all that that's a Perhaps we could, uh, if you're out there, Noel, uh, did you want to uh, comment on things? Okay, Noel? He's scarpered, now we've got you, okay. Okay. No problem. Um, yeah, so I, th I think um, a, a very useful experience from the technical point of view, I'm very pleased about that. You will get, um, whether automatic, I'm not sure yet, but we'll, all the outputs we will distribute, you might get links to them, I'm not sure how it works fully, but we'll certainly output all that and we'll go through all the comments and we'll try and have and produce some, something for that as well and circulate those. Um, but um, yeah, I think um, um, it's been very useful, a good way to explore something like a book. I mean, I, I, of course, John, I think, has got the new version of the Lean Toolbox coming out at some point in the future. So maybe yeah, uh, it'll be, uh, we, we're hoping by the end of the year. That's, of course, that's with Matthias. Uh, yes. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so plenty of new developments in that area as well. But uh, although probably not as much as in the human uh, a area, I think. Yeah. Right. Well, you never know. We might, we could repeat the exercise around, around that one as well. Um, Okay, great. So um, I think we will, we've got just a few minutes to go. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll close now and say thanks very much for your participation, certainly in the polls. Um, come back um, either by email or over the means with any of the comments on this, because it's the first time we've done it on this scale, this type of thing. And I quite like it as an interactive vehicle. And we've got some good stuff actually that we can use in lots of different ways, some little pointers. Um, so um, thanks again for your participation. and. Um, and um, have a good rest of the day, and um, and and we will obviously get back with the human lean book draw. Uh, so hopefully, those of you who are interested, to put your name in the chat, and we'll sort of do that in the next few weeks and do a further communication on that. Um, then, so thanks, thanks very much, everybody, and uh, have have a good rest of the day. Okay, thank you, Simon. <laughs>